Have you ever wondered what it takes to paint a 600 foot long mural? Well, today I'm going to show you. My name is Vic and I'm an artist in Tucson. I was recently commissioned to paint a mural for a housing complex being built called Solstice. And today I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes of the process. The client asked me if I would take this mural project on as the luxury apartments will be looking out towards this wall and it really needs to be improved. So I'm gonna be doing lots of large scale interior artwork for them already as well as two other highly detailed murals, and they must all be done by the time that construction is finished. Some of the art is completed already, and I just really love the challenge. So I immediately had an idea for the wall, and I briefly discussed the limitations of what I could do for a wall this size by designing with simple yet high impact shapes to work inside their budget. As you can tell from the in-progress collection of interior paintings, for this project, I also wanted to incorporate elements of the sun, moon, and stars with the surrounding desert landscape into this mural. With a wall this large, I knew that I would need to be smart about how I designed it because eventually I would have to paint it. Heavily detailed art would be awesome, but it wasn't needed in this instance as this wall would mostly be viewed from very far away. Simple silhouettes with heavy contrast would make a high impact and would be easily recognizable from the apartments on both the first and second floor. I created two digital versions of the composition for the client, one with more silhouettes and one with less. As I charged by the painted square foot, I wanted to offer options for both price and appearance. Both of the designs worked, but I am glad that they chose the one with more silhouettes as it gives me an opportunity to tell a story with more cactus and animal shapes. I also offered a few colorways based off the exterior colors of the building to be painted in the future. They have a team of designers and an established lookbook, so I wanted to offer options that they can choose from to fit the look that they were going for. I'm personally so glad that we ended up going with the dual color way. I requested that they had the wall painted before I began applying my design as this wall is so huge and I also don't have a paint sprayer. I recorded as much as I could to show you how I went about this mural and hopefully offer some insights, tips, and a behind the scenes look into this exciting process. My husband, Clint, and I showed up for day one around 7 p.m., right before the sun was about to set. It helps to set up the projector before you lose all of the light. Luckily, Clint is a professional sign painter, and between the both of us, we have everything tool-wise to get this job done. With that being said, we also have quite a bit of experience painting. There are a few challenges that come with projecting, mainly being light pollution obscuring the imagery, and also getting everything lined up or sized correctly. Luckily, the area where we were projecting was pretty dark, but we did have some issues with the sizing. Essentially, we run the projector off the power from our truck, and we strap it to an A-frame ladder to get the height. The mural is in front of a drainage ditch, so our truck was at quite an angle. We spent a lot of time getting the image to project squarely and from the right distance. Luckily, there was just enough space and we were able to get everything lined up. Once we had finished placing all of our lines for that section, we would just simply drive the truck forward and it would move that projector. We'd have to reline everything up and then we would trace again and continue the process. When I was designing this mural, I kept the projecting in mind and I left gaps between each of the shapes. This way, if our images were just a few inches off from the original composition, it would not change the overall impact or design. I cropped the digital composition into 15 pieces for the projector, and we cross-referenced printed copies of the design as we used our carpenter pencils to draw our outlines onto the wall. It took about 5 hours, and we left around 1 a.m. that night. Once we had finished projecting about two-thirds of the wall, we decided to move the truck down to the other end of the wall and start projecting backwards. That way, we can make sure that everything was paced out evenly and that we are following our composition as best as we can. It's really hard to see how much wall is left at night, especially because this wall is essentially as large as two football fields. The next day, we woke up and got started on the wall bright and early. We only had the scissor lift for a few days, so we prioritized the imagery higher up on the wall, but we're hoping to complete the mural within the week. 
We used a water-based exterior grade paint that has a high light pass rating. This is extremely important to protect the color from fading due to the sun, especially here in Tucson, Arizona, where the sun does not quit. Also, due to the relentless heat, the paint in our cups and brushes dried really quickly, so we had to do small batches of paint and go back to the main paint bucket and refill our cup, wash out our brushes about every 20 minutes or so. Luckily, because it was so hot, our paint did dry pretty quickly on the wall, which was wonderful because in the afternoon it became quite overcast and started to rain just a little bit. We were at a really good stopping point, we had got a ton done for the day, and we were ready to go home and take a break. So it's day three of working on the mural, and have I mentioned how fun scissor lifts are? I don't think I have. Anyway, um, they've been really useful for painting everything, high up and in the middle, and they also have a pretty awesome horn function, which I used to its fullest capacity during this project. <laughs> The goal for today was to finish blocking in all of the shapes that we had left and also to follow behind with a paint roller and fill in the really large area that our two inch cutter brushes would take forever to fill in. So I just went through with my brush and just focused on getting all those small details in. It was really important for me to, although have you know, a more simple design with the simple silhouettes to make sure that you could still see a lot of detail and that that was conveyed from a faraway distance. So intricate shapes, but also simplified in other areas. That's what's so awesome about intentional design. While you're designing, if you have the painting process in mind, as well as the projecting process, and then making sure that your design overall will be the most effective it can be for the space you're designing for, the process will just go easier for you. And I know that it may look easy when we are uh, filling in these shapes at 40 times the speed of as it was recorded, so I wanted to show you guys how long it takes to do a brush stroke. <laughs> and I consider myself to be a pretty fast painter in general, but there's a lot of skill that goes into making a clean line and taking your time to really pull that paint and push it around how you want it to go. When we were painting on the wall, we were really grateful for this being a concrete wall as the texture is really smooth and because it was freshly painted, our paint sat really easily on top so it didn't take too much effort as normally the paint will soak in and normally in Tucson we have stucco walls which has a lot of texture. So overall, we really enjoyed the painting process. Even though we were so tired, we were really excited to be wrapping up the mural today. And we already have everything blocked in, everything is lined out. So basically today, all we're gonna do is touch-ups. We just found areas of the wall that we were not happy with <laughs> and we touched them up. Any marks on the wall that you can see from a distance, um, they need to be fixed. So I went through with the base color and cleaned up any areas that had drips from our paint and scuffs or marks on the wall. You probably won't be able to see these from far away, but I don't care. I'm a perfectionist and I want it to look good up close as well as far away. Another important thing that I'm doing today is cross-referencing with a paper design of the composition I submitted to the client. I want to make sure that my mural matches this composition as closely as it can. One of the things that was really hard to determine when we were projecting it is how high these ground areas needed to be, so I did end up going back through with a pencil, marking off some new areas that I wanted to fill in with green, just so that it matched my design better. Probably super nitpicky, but again, I'm a perfectionist and it must be done perfectly. So I just went through and plugged in all those new areas. As I did this, Clint went through and double checked everything, made sure that that second coat of paint that we put on all of the design was nice and even. 
And no matter how much confidence you have that you've completed the design perfectly, there's always going to be a spot or two that catches your eye. So we just went through a couple more times, made sure everything looked good, and then we took a step back and admired our hard work. Overall, I think we've majorly improved this wall, and it will be really beautiful for all the people that get to live here and enjoy it each day. It's really hard to get an establishing shot of the mural because it's so long and skinny, so I'm going to piece together some videos for you guys to hopefully give you a better look. I'm always so grateful to be able to work on large projects like this that get to impact people's lives. If you guys like this type of video, let me know down in the comments. I'm doing two more murals for them, but they'll be a little bit more detailed. So if you'd like me to share that process, I'd be happy to. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week.